Practical XML, representing data the new way. The purpose of this session is to provide an introduction to XML and to describe how it is used in computer applications and why. This presentation was first given at the National Environmental Exchange Network Conference in Chicago, Illinois on April 22, 2010. What is XML? It really is nothing more than a text file. So if you have an XML file on your computer, you can view it in any, just about any application on your computer, such as Notepad, Word, or your web browser. XML is a format for representing data in a flexible and structured way. Consider a list of permits, for example. We have a simple table with three columns. Uh, we have a list of three permits. Uh, and each permit has a permit number, an issue date, and the status. The way we would represent this data in XML is like this. Uh, notice that, again, it is just a text file. And what we have here is a series of XML tags, which uh, we see here in the open and closing brackets. And we can see that each permit is represented in a block of text. So a permit is represented by a permit tag. And within the permit tag, we have a permit number, an issue date, and a status. You can see each tag has an opening tag and a closing tag. Let's take a look at the syntax a little bit closer. Some of this we just discussed. Uh, again, tags wrap data. So we've got this tag that says permit number. And the actual content of the data is uh, in between the opening and closing tag. Uh, the difference between an opening tag and a closing tag is going to be the slash that denotes a closing tag. Tags can be empty. Now, we didn't see this in the prior example, but uh, to represent an empty tag, we just put the slash at the end of the uh, element name. Tags can also wrap other tags to create a group. So in the example we just saw before, uh, we have a permit list. And in this case, we have a list of permit numbers in a permit list. So by this way, we can group data within tags as containers. Uh, this is kind of like the Russian doll example, where inside one tag might be another, and inside that might be another. This creates a hierarchical structure to XML, so it can be nested very many levels deep, depending on the type of data you're looking at. So why is XML so useful? Well, uh, first of all, it's human-readable. If you compare XML to a legacy format, such as a flat file, you can see uh, already why why it's so much uh, more friendly for, for a human to read. Uh, on the screen we have an example of an old flat file that shows the same information. In this case we have the permit number here uh, and it's run right up against the permit issue date which is uh, 2003 June two th uh, 23rd and then we have an abbreviation for the uh, permit status. So without a data dictionary or some other documentation, it can be awfully difficult to interpret uh, this information. Uh, XML is also much more uh, uh, readable, especially compared to something like binary, which of course can't be interpreted by anything but a machine. Uh, another useful aspect of XML is that it can be used to represent hierarchical data. Uh, so in the example below, we've expanded the permit list that we used in our first example to include two contacts. Okay, so as before, we have a, a list of permits, and in this case, just one permit. And for this one permit, we have a contacts tag that we use to contain two individual contacts. And each contact is, is here in its own block. Uh, we have a DMR contact with a name and email address, and also a permit contact with a name and address. So you can see here, by nesting data within other data, you can create complex representations of information that run several levels deep. Now, if you compare this to a flat file, uh, you would need separate files because a flat file can only represent uh, a single table of data, whereas XML can contain many different tables and also express the relationship between those data elements, as we see here. Uh, most programs today can read and manipulate XML. Uh, it's a very common format for many programs to use. Also, XML structure and syntax can be validated using an XML schema. 
uh, we'll investigate schema a little bit later in this broadcast. Uh, another a f useful feature of XML is that it's compatible with the web. So let's take a look at XML in action. Uh, we're going to start with looking at a file in Internet Explorer. We've got a sample XML file right here. Uh, here's our permit list. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and drag that right into Internet Explorer. And sure enough, here is the data we showed in our example with our three permits. So uh, you can load XML right here into your web browser. Uh, another thing that uh, Internet Explorer does for you is it allows you to expand and contract each uh, section with these little minus and plus arrows if you enable that feature. So that allows you to expand and collapse the document. And when they get rather large, it's a useful way to help navigate around the document easily. Another example of XML in action, uh, we can use uh, Microsoft Excel. And in our case here, we'll use Excel 2007, although earlier uh, versions of Excel do support XML as well. Uh, so we'll go ahead and uh, jump into Excel. And we'll go ahead and open up an XML file. We'll do the same thing we did before. Now, Excel is going to give us an option for what we want to do with the XML. For this beginning example, we're simply going to open it as an XML table. And sure enough, uh, it loads the data into a grid format. It looks really similar to what we showed in the opening slide of this presentation. Uh, nice thing about uh, Excel is uh, it has already figured out uh, the structure of the XML file just by looking at uh, the file that we open. So we can uh, add items to our list and it uh, and then when we go to save it as XML it's going to uh, do it correctly. So I just added a new permit to our list and we'll save it. We'll tell it to stay in XML format. Uh, we'll call it just book 2. And we'll close out of Excel. And let's jump back to uh, our file system here. And here's book two that we just opened. And if we open it up in our XML uh, viewing application, we're using Altova XML Spy here, you can see that uh, Excel indeed uh, followed the format of all our previous entries and added this new entry here into the list for us. So Excel's pretty clever that way and can read and manipulate XML directly without even having to look at the uh, text of the XML behind the scenes. Uh, a question that might come up at this point is, well, what happens when you open up hierarchical data in Excel? Well, uh, for example, our contact example, we had one permit with two contacts. Uh, Excel spreadsheets can only handle items as a table, one single table. So how do we do it when we have essentially two tables uh, under, the, under, the, under the hood? Um, in this case, what Excel will do is flatten everything out. So we'll see the permits and the contacts in the same view. Uh, 